In this video, I'm going to talk about Cloud DNS and all the features and functionality available to you in our web-based management portal. After I've logged in with my username and password from the main dashboard, I'm going to choose Cloud DNS. And you'll see that there are a number of sub-tabs within this section, and I'll talk about all of them briefly. The Information tab that you first land on will provide uh, announcements from us, mostly about new features and functionality specific to the DNS product. So you may want to peek at that from time to time. The Data tab provides different elements that you can use to create widgets and attach those to your main dashboard. And the more you use DNS, the more domains you add, companies, users, and so forth, the more widgets uh, or elements will appear here that you can use for those widgets. The Domains tab is really where the bulk of the operation happens here. And you'll see that there's a nice table that displays all of your domains, the domain types, the user who last logged in, the last modified date, whether any zone transfer pools are attached to them, and the status icons. Over on the far right, we have a legend for all of the status icons that you'll see. Down below that, you'll see the name servers that we've assigned to your account. And you'll see that we have a number of different TLDs. So for example, if you have a .com domain, you'll probably want to use our .com name servers. Or if you have a .NET domain, you'll probably want to use our .NET name servers and so forth. And if you click the Learn More link, we'll provide more information about how to use those name servers the best way possible. And I'll talk about how to add new domains and edit them shortly, but I quickly want to finish going through all of the tabs across the top. The failover pools is uh, a functionality that allows you to create different pools of IP addresses that you can then assign to A records in order to automate changing. So for example, here I've created a web server farm pool. I've put two servers in it, and basically it's monitoring them with a ping test. And if one of those servers stops pinging, it's going to change the IP address in DNS automatically. I'm not going to talk about failover a lot in this video because I do talk about it in other videos, so you may want to look for those as well on our website. The GeoZones tab is somewhat similar, except in this case I can create pools and assign IP addresses for different geographies. So for example, if a user comes to my website from Europe, or makes a request for my website from Europe, I can give them one IP address, or if they come from North America, I can give them another IP address, and so forth. So this allows me to direct my traffic to the destinations that are most appropriate for that particular user. And again, I'm not going to talk about GeoZones too much in this video, because we do talk about it in another video in great detail. The Monitors tab is where you can create different monitoring types, and then you would attach those monitors to your servers. And that's what we use for failover in Geo in order to detect server status in order to make those automated changes. And I do talk about the monitors in other videos in quite a bit of detail. And the Import Export tab allows you to import domains from other name servers. So you could choose the uh, Internet option here and you can pull a zone transfer right across the Internet from another name server to import a domain into our network. You can use the From Files dialog here in order to uh, import text files that may have your zones in them. Or you can even copy and paste them just from, a, uh, from your clipboard into the, the field there and create them that way. We'll talk about that in just another minute. The Zone Transfer tab is where you can create groups of IP addresses that are authorized to pull zone transfers from your domains. And what you have to do is you have to create these pools and then assign a pool to a specific domain. So it's fairly granular in that regard as well. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So let's go back to the Domains tab here, again, where we see all of the domains that are in our portal. In my test account, I only have three example domains. So let's go ahead and add another domain in here. There's two ways to do it. I can click the Add button and manually key it in. So I could type in my domain, choose the domain type that it is, primary, secondary, or reverse, and specify the other parameters that are in the dialog box here and click Save, which would create the domain for me. And you'll see that it was added successfully and it now appears in the grid. Now you'll see the row in the table shows over on the far right the status. And the status is that the, uh, the domain has pending updates. This status icon is what confirms the propagation across our global network. And it changes when you click the reload button. And you'll see that it's already propagated across our entire network. Then the authoritative icon shows whether or not you have the name servers pointing to us. So once I've added a domain here and configured it properly, I want to go to my domain registrar and change the name servers to the one that I showed you in the bottom right of this page. Our authoritative check runs a couple times a day, 
and it's just another level to uh, point you in the right direction when configuring your domains. Now another way to add domains is through the import export tab. And I want to show you that quickly as well. So here I want to import a domain from a file. And a file is basically you know just a flat file that consists of the zone data. So I'm going to go ahead and click select files. And now in the dialog box that pops up I'm going to select uh, example100.com and you'll see that it appears in the list here and I can add as many domains as I want. I can also put all of these flat files in a zip file and upload a single zip file. So it's fairly flexible in that regard. And now that it's in there, I'm going to click Upload. And you'll see that the domain has imported successfully with the message that's presented to me on the right hand side. And now if I go back to the Domains tab, you'll see that my example 100 is here. And I can expand it, take a look inside, and you'll see that I have a bunch of different record types. Now I can uh, expand those record types to see these very specific records that are in there, and I can see all the configuration data right here in the table. Adding new records is very easy. Just clicking the Add button will allow me to uh, add an additional record. And here you'll also see I have the ability to choose a geozone or a failover pool. And again, we'll talk about that more in another video. So again, record types are fairly straightforward. I can also add new record types. And you quickly see in this Add New uh, dialog box that we support a lot of the most common record types that you'll ever want to use. We also support web redirects. And they're not really a, a DNS record type, but it's a very common feature. So we've added it here. And that basically allows you to create a, uh, a record for a particular zone. So I could create test.example100.com, but I could redirect it to Google, for example. So if somebody types that into a browser, it'll immediately redirect them to the URL that I specify. And you can have a very deep URL in that as well. So that is uh, DNS record types in a nutshell. And you'll see again that uh, it's very easy to go into any one of the domains that I have by just expanding them and, uh, and viewing them. You can also select a, uh, a row from the table here and click the View Records button. I can also click the Edit button for that particular domain. And this is where I can change the company ownership. So if I had a sub-company that I wanted to transfer ownership to, basically put it in their account so they can edit it, that can be done here. And this is also where I specify the zone transfer settings. So you saw earlier that I had this pool of IP addresses that I put in uh, in there called corporate name servers. Well, I could select that here and click Save. And now if somebody were to pull a zone transfer of this uh, example53.com from the IP address that I had in that pool, it would allow it. So fairly straightforward uh, operation there as well. And hopefully it, uh, it makes uh, good sense. I can also copy zones. So you'll see that I've selected example54.com. I can click the Copy Zones button and I can make a whole uh, duplicate copy of that zone so I could create um, example55.com for example and click submit and you'll see that it quickly creates a full duplicate of that zone. So again we've tried to put everything in here that makes it uh, very uh, easy to use and intuitive. We'll talk about a lot of the other functions uh, that we've briefly touched on in the other tabs in other videos but I do want to point you to the help section in the upper right hand corner here if you click on it in any section, it will provide you with context relevant help for the page that you're on. And this is a great resource for uh, getting information about anything that you might be trying to do. You may also want to visit our support portal at support.totaloptimetech.com. Uh, you can uh, search our knowledge base. You can also create tickets to request our assistance, and we're happy to do it. So that's it for now. We'll hopefully see you at another video.